Hello, I'm Anne Kerr. Welcome to my art studio. The beauty of watercolour is its wonderful transparency. Have you ever noticed that sometimes your paintings have lost that transparency? Well, in this video, I'm going to show you a very easy method of getting that transparency back into all your future paintings. Are you ready? Watercolour has a real uniqueness about it and it's the wonderful transparency. You can see through these beautiful veils of colour. Now the method that I use to keep this transparency is actually very simple and I'll show you how to do it. In order to do it, you need to have two things. First of all, obviously, you need to have watercolours that are transparent. Now, I've already made a video where it shows you how to test your watercolours to find out whether or not they are transparent. Because many cheap watercolours are not. They're actually quite opaque. So make sure your watercolours are transparent in the first place. So that's the first thing you need. And the second thing you need is good quality watercolour paper. You want paper that will hold a lot of water and stay wet for a long time. Now the best paper for that is 100% cotton. I know we've all got our favourite papers and we stick to them, but if you really want to do the method that I'm going to show you, you do need to have good quality watercolour paper and I do recommend 100% cotton. So, let's look down at the desk and let's get on with it. Now I want you to imagine that you're painting a picture. So I'm going to use this beautiful quinacridone magenta and I'm going to put a layer of paint down here. So you can see the wonderful transparency of that paint. You can see the glow of the, of the white paper coming through underneath. Now that's just one layer, of, one layer of paint. Now if you let that dry, and then a bit later you come back and you add another layer to that. Maybe you're putting in a darker colour or a bit more detail. So we've already had one layer of paint. There it is. That's this one. And you've come back again and you've put another layer of paint. That's the second layer. And you let that dry. And then a bit later on again you come back and you add some more to it. Maybe you're putting in some deeper shadows or some more detail or you're changing something. So we have another layer of paint, number three. And then maybe a bit later on after this is all dried you come back again and you finish it off with all the fine details and things and you have your last layer of paint which is number four. Now every time you put down a layer of paint and let it dry you're making your painting a slightly more opaque every time you put a layer down. Now, if you do a painting that's only got one layer of paint, there again you can see that wonderful transparency. And if it only has one layer of paint, surely this painting is going to be more transparent than that one. Because each of these layers that you've put down and allowed them to dry in between have made the painting that little bit more opaque every time. Even though you're using transparent watercolours, they've all got a little bit of opaqueness to them. Just a tiny bit, otherwise they wouldn't have any colour. So every time you lay one of these uh, layers down and let it dry, you're making your painting that little bit more opaque. So common sense would tell us that we need to keep our painting with just one layer of paint. Well, you might say, how can we possibly do that if we want to do lots of alterations and changes and things to our painting? How can we keep it 
in one layer. It's not possible. Yes, it is. Let me show you. Imagine I'm going to do a, a little landscape and I'm going to paint the sky. So what I do is I make my sky. I'm not bothered about the rest of the landscape. I'm just bothered about the sky at the moment. So I'm going to make my sky lovely and wet. The rest of the landscape can wait. Concentrate on the actual area that you're interested in, that you're going to paint first. So I've made my sky, if you like, lovely and wet. And then I start putting in my colours. So here we go with a beautiful yellow. And I start laying in my colours. Then I might think, ah, oh, let's add a bit of orange to that. Let's make a really stunning sort of sky. I can move it around. And I think, hmm, maybe that's not exactly what I want. So I can take a piece of sponge and I can, if I want, take it out. Rub it out. Blot it out. Do what I like to it. As long as I keep this paint wet, I can do exactly what I want with this painting. I can change my colours, I can change directions. And if it begins, if it begins to dry out, you just take a water bottle and you spray. And you spray the air above it too, to keep the air above it from drying out. So let's, okay, let's come back with a bit more yellow. I'll move that around and I can take it up here. And I think, hmm, not quite so keen on that. So I'll take that bit out and I'll blot that bit out with a bit of tissue. It doesn't matter what you do, provided you keep that paint wet. See how I can come in over that and change it? And you think, yeah, that's coming on. I think the red is a little bit on the bright side. So I'll take that out and I'll blot that out again. And I'll spray my paint to keep it wet. I can carry on doing this for ages. I can change things, I can alter things, I can put things in, I can take things out, as long as you keep that painting wet. And the way to keep it wet is just to keep spraying it. And then I think, hmm, well maybe I'll put a bit of dark purple in, let's drop that in as well. Now my painting is wet, so I can carry on doing whatever I want. And I think, mm, I'm not so keen on that purple. Okay, let's take it out. Let's just remove it. Couldn't do that with cheap paper, I'll tell you. Keep it wet. Come back in again with whatever colour you want. Here we go. So can you see what I mean? As long as that area that you're painting stays wet, you can do what you like to it. And I could keep doing this for 20 minutes if I wanted to, provided my paper will stand up to the movement on the surface. Once it starts to dry, then you have to stop. And then when it dries, it is going to dry down to one layer, and that's the secret. All this movement that I did, putting in, taking out, changing, altering colours, blotting things out, sponging things out, whatever I did, it didn't matter what I did as long as I didn't let it dry. As soon as it dries, it all dries down to one level. And that's why this, when it's dry, will be transparent. Much more so than if I had built up layers like this. I used to paint like this all the time until I discovered this way of doing it. And that's how I can get these vibrant colours and this beautiful, beautiful transparency. 
Now, I've got a couple of paintings here that I've made prints of. I no longer have the paintings themselves, so I couldn't actually show you the real paintings. But I've printed them off. So this is one that I did, and I'll quickly talk you through how I did it. When I did this painting, I wet the sky all over, just like I did when I did this. I wet the sky all over, I had my paints mixed up ready, my blues, and I painted my sky, and I got it exactly as I wanted it. I took out some bits with a sponge, I took out some bits with a wet brush, and I played around with it for, I don't know, five, ten minutes, whatever, until I got it exactly as I wanted it. And then I allowed it to dry. So, one layer of paint. Then I moved down to the mountains and I wet those. Now the reason I would let my sky dry first is I wanted this lovely crisp edge on the top of the mountains. Had I painted my mountains when the sky was still wet, I wouldn't have got that. So I wet my mountains, I played around with them, took paint out, put paint in, and when they were as I wanted them, I let them dry. Again, one layer of paint. Then I wet the, um, uh, the rocks over here and put in all these different colours, played around with it, and when I was happy with the rocks, I let them dry. One layer of paint. And so it went on throughout the painting. Even here with the little house, because I'd left a patch of white there, when I painted the house, it was again only one layer of paint. Now the only time that I actually came in and put a second layer of paint onto this painting was the little birds in the sky and these little fence posts in the front. Exactly the same with this one. I painted the sky, taking my time and doing exactly what I did here, putting colours in, taking colours out, I took as long as I wanted, it didn't matter, provided I kept spraying it and keeping it damp. Then I let it dry. I did the same with the water. Let it dry. In the meantime, this area here had all been left as white, paint, as, uh, white paper. So that when that was dry, this was dry with one layer of paint. I then went in and painted this again with one layer of paint. So the only time I came in with a second layer was when I did these little distant things in the background. I hope you can see that by doing a painting where you keep the, the um, watercolours just settling down into just one layer of paint, you will get back that beautiful transparency. Yes, I know if you're doing um, very detailed paintings, of course you have to let the layers of paint dry in between, or you'd never get the detail. Everything would blur into everything else. But if you're doing big washes and big areas where you want colours to blend together, then the method I've just shown you really does work, and it brings back that beautiful transparency that is totally unique to watercolours. If you haven't done so already, then please click that subscribe button. Have a look at the video that I've done on how to test your watercolours to find out if they're transparent or not. And you'll find a link to that in the little card at the end of the video. Thank you for watching. Click the little upward thumb like button if you've enjoyed this video. And I'll see you soon. Bye for now. And remember, there is an artist in everyone. Bye.